Hello, this is Major Clang of Four Gonzo Airsoft. Those of you who've been following my Facebook page will know that a couple of weeks ago I attended a Milsim game. This video is going to be a rundown of the scenario that was played, uh, going over the scenario and the, and the rules, because I got enough footage there for probably about four or five videos. And so rather than have to recap that at the start of each of those, you can use this one as a, as a reference. This was my first Milsim game and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope that uh, this video and the others will give any, uh, anyone else who is interested in attending one of those games uh, an idea of what it was like. So the scenario for this game was as follows. The date is the 1st of May 2019 in Antarctica. The situation is that a military satellite of unknown origin has crashed in a remote area of Antarctica. All that is known is that both the UK and Argentinian governments are within striking distance and have declared it as theirs. It is believed the role of the satellite could be a simple reconnaissance, but it, there is speculation that it's either some form of advanced weapon system or an oil locating platform. It is hoped that an agreement can be reached before shots are fired, but at this stage nothing can be ruled out. The situation harks back to the Falkland conflict 40 years previous. I, playing as one of the British Special Forces, has been have been given a number of timed objectives that need to be achieved throughout the day. I won't uh, go through everyone in detail, but these include making contact with the Argentinian forces and attempting to negotiate a, an agreement. If negotiations fail, we need to attempt to capture their envoy. Following that, we need to try and be the first to set up an anti-aircraft system by fitting missiles to the rapier's launcher. We need to try and find the satellite tracking station, find out how many parts the satellite was broken into. Plant a bomb in drop for three, as this is believed to be the enemy's intelligence hub. At around 1300, our commander has to give an interview to a news crew at Camp Breach. Following that, we need to retrieve a toolbox from one of the Snatch Land Rovers and transport this to our APC in order to repair it. And then we need to drive that APC from our base into a, a forward position. Throughout the day, we need to attempt to capture the enemy flag, which is deployed in their HQ. Intelligence also reports that the enemy will be attempting to destroy a target which could be in one of three bases. And then the final objective of the day will be a land grab and points will be rewarded for holding uh, each of five different areas in the site. Each of those is timed objectives and we have uh, specific times where we should be starting or, or finishing and we'll only get points if we manage to complete it by a certain time. Um, there are also additional uh, sub-objectives which could be done at any time and these include uh, finding the enemy's radio frequency which is listed at their HQ, capturing commander's armbands and locating parts of the down satellite which are scattered throughout the site. The beauty of the Milsim game over the um, kind of normal pick up and play games is that the timed objectives add a whole uh, different element to it. Uh, with your whole team spread out across the site attempting to achieve one of these objectives or having been sent in advance to try and secure one of the uh, forthcoming objectives meant for some very uh, anxious moments defending bases and uh, lulls which uh, suddenly broke out into quite intense firefights. It was quite exciting. Now there were some uh, other rules which uh, set this apart from the, your normal pick up and play games and I'll quickly cover those and there were some strict ammo limits in force uh, if you were covering a, an assault rifle you were only allowed up to 300 rounds and you were not allowed to carry any high capacity magazines snipers were limited to 50 rounds and support guns were allowed 1500 uh, the only time that you were able to reload was by returning back to your base, which, uh, depending on where you'd ended up on the, in during the day and what objective you're attempting to do, that could be a very long walk. The medic rules for the day were that each team member was given a number of bandages with pins, 
and they were able to pin them to someone who had been hit and that would bring them back into the game. Uh, on the day I was given two bandages and so that's as, as much as I medicing as I could do until I could return to the, the base and re, uh, replenish my supply of bandages. Should you not be able to get medicked after a two minute bleed out period you could return to your base. On returning to the base there is a respawn clock which has five minute segments marked off in black. If you had if you returned in a section which was black then you had to wait until the clock had moved into a white section before you were allowed to respawn which meant potentially you could be out of the game for your two minute bleed out, the t time it takes you to get back to your base plus five minutes clock. So getting taken out could potentially take you out of the action for quite some time. And then finally uh, each of the teams had a camo uh, requirement. As British we were required to wear uh, green based uniforms. The Argentinian forces were required to wear desert type camo and uh, we found that most of the players on the day uh, had the multicam. That concludes the summary and the rules for the day. The footage that you've been watching initially showed our commander meeting with the Argentinian. That uh, meeting went off fairly peacefully but there was a very rapid escalation in the, in the conflict and very quickly it became a full-on firefight. Following that, the footage shows me with a small team of, of six men approaching uh, one of the objectives and uh, unsuccessfully uh, trying to make inroads into it. The next episodes I'm going to attempt to release on a weekly basis, so please stay tuned for more. For now, this is Clanger out. <laughs>